You may be familiar with simulation projects and quiz projects. In this video, I'm going to combine the two of those things by including a question within a simulation. Why would you want to do this? Maybe just as a knowledge check at the end of the simulation, or you want to do it the other way around and actually include the simulation in a quiz. So first thing, you do need to have a quiz question template. This is a book page with a subtype of quiz template. This is what's going to be used to format and display that question during playback. Again, this is a quiz question template, not simply a book page that has a question inserted on it. So I have that here and we'll see where that's used in a minute. Now I have a simulation that I'm going to put this question into. I'm just going to use it as a knowledge check at the end of the simulation. The simulation already exists. I've already recorded it. So I'm going to go into edit on that. Now within that simulation, the usual thing, I've got a whole bunch of steps explaining how to do a certain thing. In this example, I'm actually explaining how to generate and manage a report in Power BI, but that's fairly immaterial here. We don't really care. All I want to do is put a knowledge check question right at the end. So I'm going to do that after step 26, before step 27, which is the end. And I'm going to insert a new step to do that. You don't have to, because it really just inserts the question as a macro, so it can be in another step. But I've got audio here, which means I only really want one macro per step, and it's going to separate it out so that I'll see it in the progress bar. So I'm going to go to insert add step. I'm going to call this step knowledge check. And this is where I'm going to insert my new question. So the questions are here. You'll have seen this button already when you're creating a quiz and inserting questions into the quiz. From here, just click the drop down and then choose the type of question. All the regular types are available to you. You also have the quiz section and quiz evaluation as well if you wanted to include those. For now, I really just want to include a multiple choice question. So I'm going to click on that one. Now you can see it has inserted that macro for me and I have all of the same properties available to me as if I was editing a quiz, because a quiz is just another type of a project. So first thing to notice here, I've got the template. This is the template that I pointed out earlier that we've absolutely got to have in place. This is what's used to format this question. So I have the template here. Jumping to the title, the way I've got my template set up is I've got a title here which explains what section of the course this refers to or something like that. So here I'm just going to call this knowledge check again. And then the task, as always, is my question. So here I can type my question in. And then my answers as usual. Now I also have available all of the other options I have for a question. I'm not going to worry too much about those for now, but I am going to go to here to show the feedback. So I want to show you another useful thing with this. So show feedback when they've answered the question, you have the option to show the feedback and tell them whether they were right or wrong, that kind of thing. So if they get it correct, nice simple message. Now the quiz failed. This is, if they get this question wrong, what are you going to tell them? And you could just say, no, sorry, try again. But given that we're trying to teach people things, it's always useful to refer them back to where they can find the information they need to answer the question correctly. So they can review that before trying again. So what we'll type in in here, so what I've done here is I've said, please re-review the simulation starting from this step. Now, very handy what I can do here, and this is generally true for all questions anyway, but it works very well in this particular situation, is here I can turn this into a hyperlink. I can insert a link here, and I can make this a step link and link back to a particular step in the simulation. And in this example, I know that this is step six because I've been through here before already. So I'm gonna jump back to step six, and I can call this review if I want to. Okay, so I'll put that in there. So that is my question inserted into my simulation as step 27, and that will work perfectly during playback. If I go into practice mode, for example, I'll just review it from step 25. So from here, step 25 is clicking on that table button, just so I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to preview it from here. 
So here's my simulation in practice mode. I'm starting from step 25. Here's my last action, which is clicking on the data button. I click on that. I get an explanation, which is the very last macro in here. Note the progress bar still has one position left on it. I click next and I'm straight into my question in my knowledge check question. Now, in this case, I'm going to get this deliberately wrong just so we can see that jump back. So if I select the incorrect answer here, click next, and I get the message, sorry, that's not the correct answer. Please review this simulation starting from this step. And if I go and click on that link, it throws me all the way back to exactly the point in the simulation where it's explaining what I need to know to get that question correct. So all good there. Let's go back to the simulation in the editor. Okay, now let's try that in test mode. So I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna preview it from here. However, one thing I'm gonna show you before we do that is pay attention to the points here. This is how many points will be awarded if the user gets this correct. Now, for a standard simulation, for every action within that simulation, by default, there's three points available for that action. If the user gets it right on the first attempt, they'll get three points. If they get it right on the second attempt, they'll get two points because they have a point deducted. If they get it correct on the third attempt, they get one point. And if they don't get it correct even on the third attempt, they get zero points. But what this means is that by default, if you have the points for the question set to one, that's going to award them with as many points as they'd get if they got a single action within that simulation correct on the third attempt. So it's significantly weighted down. So you might want to pay attention to that and award 10 points for it or as many points as they get for completing the simulation or something like that. I'd say at least three points is what you would want to give them here. So I'm going to go into test mode and again, I'm going to play it back from the same point. So this is test mode. I have my task description at the top here and I don't have any other instructions, but I know here, for example, the thing I need to do is go and click on this table button. So I click on that. And as expected, I'm right into my knowledge check question. This time I will get it correct. So from here, I know that it's web. Click next. That's correct. Click next. And I finished. So what I wanted to point out here is the acquired score. This is the points I've scored for this particular simulation in test mode. And you see it says four of four. Those four points, three of them come from clicking on that button. That was the one action that I performed. Remember, I previewed it from almost the end of the simulation. So I performed one action and got three points for that. And then I answered the question, which has one point available for it, giving me a total of four points. Again, be careful of that waiting. But for now, I'm finished. Let's go back to the editor. And that is pretty much how to do that. It's fairly simple. The downside is that there is no option in here to say show this multiple choice macro only in certain modes. So it's going to be there for every mode that is available in the simulation. However, there is a way of getting around that. And I do cover that in the online course if you're interested. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.